Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus. And Ushamut Zide Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call as total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini chords. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Let's start episode 347 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by David and he writes, Thank you for telling me about this mini life concept. It helps me to know that there are other people who do this and that's not some crazy idea that only I do. I'm trying to work on on this day Earth Shall Ring arranged by Gustav Holst. Um, it's called Perzonent Hodia. I wonder since this is originally written before the Baroque era but arranged by Holst in the 1800s uh, if you might have suggestions on registration, articulation, and other things, I'm looking at doing this for congregational singing, choir accompaniment, or professional, processional, depending upon what happens this season. If the pastor picks it to sing, it will be played as a congregational hymn. If the choir sings it, I will accompany them, and if neither occurs, I will pick it as a prelude or processional. At this time, I'm trying to play the right hand quite detached. The left hand is mostly mirroring the pedals an octave higher, and I'm playing it only with toes, but I'm not satisfied completely with the results. Is it better to register the pedals as 8 foot and 16 foot? Uh, Should reeds be used in the pedals? Should I double the pedals? Should I use mixtures instead of reeds? Maybe couple the grade to pedal and add a 16 foot stop. Maybe play with 32 foot on the electronic instrument and 16 feet on the pipe organ because it doesn't have 32 feet. Uh, what is the best thing to do with registration for the high descending note starting at the end of the third line? I almost thought about playing octaves in the pedals, two pedals and octave apart, playing the the lower two notes on the grade and playing those descending notes on chimes on the solo manual on the grade organ but on the electronic three manual organ I'm not sure what to do with those notes I don't like them played on the same manual as the lower two because of clarity and um, David includes the link to this hymn which we are looking at right now uh, this is arrangement by Gustav Holtz. Um, let me enlarge it. And it starts with descending scale starting from E in octaves in the left hand part. Do you know? So I don't know this game. Neither do I. But I think as you know, David has so many questions about this. And he is not quite sure who will perform it. If you know congregation will sing it, or choir will sing it, or he play will play it as a processional or mm-hmm. recessional. I think the, the final uh, performance on, on it and registration of this hymn will depend on which of these versions will be done. Because if if he will play it alone, he can use to you know entire organ. Mm-hmm. 
and do whatever he wants. If you know, he will sing it with a congregation, accompanied to a congregation. He can also probably use uh, many of you know stops and reads and other loud stops if the congregation is big. But if only choir will sing it, will sing it, then he of course will have to not to play so loud. What do you think about it? I agree, and I also think that this arrangement that uh, he sent the link to us is for piano, not for the organ. True. And uh, if you play double octaves with the pedals, it's just too powerful. I wouldn't do it. Then I would play, you know, the lower part, uh, the lowest voice with the pedal. But, you know, maybe I even wouldn't do the octaves on the organ. Because already, since we have, let's say, in the pedal, 16 and 8 foot stops, it already doubles, you know, it already sounds in octaves. Maybe sometimes 4 feet. Yes, and even 4 four feet, so I wouldn't do that. And if it's a louder situation, maybe you have, uh, maybe I would say, mixtures too, so it doubles in fifths too. Uh, what about uh, playing the lower part, as you say, with the pedals, but adjusting sometimes the ranges below Definitely, C. you have to arrange it, of course. Mm-hmm. And then the right hand is free to play the chords, but maybe divide them be- between the hands. True. And for me, all this you know, kind of arrangement, it looks a little bit dull. You need, I uh, think, uh, sp- sp- space it out, I think. Maybe open position chords. Especially when the melody goes upwards. That's right. Because again, look at the um, accompaniment, the top voice of the accompaniment. It doubles, you know, the melody that, you know, congregation or choir will sing. Mm -hmm. Is this a good thing? Well, yes and no. (laughs) It might be nice for one verse, but then it will get boring. For congregation, is I think yes, good. Yes, it will be easier for them to follow. But if you are only doing it with choir, then no. Choir knows already melody very well, so you could do something else, maybe. Maybe invert the right hand chords and play in a different melodic sure. position. Sure, I think that might work. Ten, tenor in the soprano. Yes. Uh, we, we see... The right hand chord in at the beginning is G B E, but you could start, for example, as B E G, or even E G B, like that. Sure. But split it between the hands. I think that's more work, of course. That's right. And one word about OSHA, uh, the pedaling and articulation. Do you think it's a Baroque type of piece or not? Well, anyway, if I would play it, I would articulate. Would you use heels? Well... (laughs) You know, if I would decide to play those double octaves, then yes, I would probably use the heels too. Mm-hmm. But if I would play only one melody, then maybe not. I'm just thinking about the style of the accompaniment. It's, you know, modal. Uh, it's It be- begins and ends in E, but it has two sharps. What does it What is this mode? E with two sharps. You don't know that you asked me. I know. Can you tell us? (laughs) Yes, I can. Don't hesitate. If you pay me. (laughs) In which currency? In euros. 
Uh, I only have esteem. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm just making fun out of you and out of myself. If it's E and it has two sharps, it means it's a Dorian mode. Dorian. Okay. It's type of uh, minor modes, which has comparing to the minor mode, natural minor mode, it has the six scale degree raised. So like in a E minor scale, you wouldn't have C sharp, but here you have it. Uh huh. Doesn't it remind you of a little bit 20th century writing? True. A lot. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there was you know, a time when it was very popular to so sort of imitate early music, like middle-aged music, Gregorian chant. So, should we play then this type of style in the early way or l later way, modern way? Legato or articulation, articulated way? I'm not sure. Sometimes. Well, it depends, you know. It depends on the piece and it depends on the place. If, well, if you want to imitate Gregorian chant, then that probably you wouldn't articulate as in a Baroque type. But again, if you know, if you want to play this kind of thing with a large registration, as David wrote, then if you wouldn't articulate at all, it might get really messy. Mm -hmm. You're right. You always listen to what's sounding. What the congregation is hearing. Not what you are hearing, but down in the pews. But anyway, you know, I guess in, in this kind of, you know, of a piece, you will be sort of forced to do some articulation, even if you will intend to play most of it legato, because it has so many repeated notes. And since the top voice of the accompaniment doubles, you know, the melody, him melodies, so you will have to articulate too because it has repeated notes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, this has been helpful to G David, who is uh, also on the team of uh, podcast conversation transcriptions. He helps us to provide you written text out of mp3 files this is really helpful and this is the only way we can produce so much material suitable for both listening and reading and in-depth conversations right because because that's a lot of words what we're talking today right Osha? True. a lot of transcribing so we're really grateful to david and others on the theme okay Please send us more of your questions. We love helping you grow. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This blog is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online, where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, the sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your SS courses and all your help. Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two three days behind, but I am a slow learner and I have committed to taking the time to get it right, as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes, It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of 
recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Around rights. Hi, Vidasant Osha. Thank you, guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right, and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this, and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue, and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video, how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.